Welcome to Storytime. I'm Suda Chico, a featured Asia Store author. For years, Asia Store at Asia Society has been a wonderful home to showcase my books. And now I'm really excited to partner with Asia Store on this new children's video series. I'm going to be reading from my latest book, The Complete Story of Sadako Sasaki and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Uh, the book was co authored by Sadako's brother, Masahiro Sasaki. Uh, Sadako was two years old when the bomb fell on her city of Hiroshima. Sadako survived, but she later developed leukemia and was hospitalized, and it was in the hospital that she learned to fold origami cranes. Um, somehow through this, she became a beloved symbol of peace by doing so, and, and quite an icon for, for students uh, of all ages, really. Uh, and uh, it's, it is a story of, of suffering and loss, and, but it's also very uplifting, especially uh, in the time we're in now. Um, we know that, that Japan suffered terribly uh, during the war, as did, did many countries and many people. Um, but it gives us the confidence today to know that better days are to come, because the world did did recover and, and thrive, and they did so by working together. And uh, so, so it really ties into what's going on now in, in that human suffering and loss and, and the unexpected uh, that enters your life can be overcome, and, and together uh, we, can, we can thrive in the future. So uh, let me read you a bit from the book, and uh, then we'll talk a little bit more about it. On August 3rd, Sadako was lying in bed when a nurse came by with a long string of colorful cranes folded by, for the patients by the youth club at the local high school. The origami cranes folded in many types of paper were handed out, filling the hospital with a burst of color and hope. Confined to bed and with little to do, many of the patients were inspired to begin folding cranes themselves. When her father visited Sadako that night, she beamed with excitement as he walked in the door. Look, father, she exclaimed, origami cranes. Sadako loved the cranes, but did not know their significance. Why did they send us origami cranes, father, she wondered. As her father looked at the cranes, he told her, giving paper cranes to someone in the hospital means that you hope they'll get well soon. Why is that, asked Sadako. There's an old story that if you fold a thousand paper cranes, your wish will come true, he explained. Sadako's eyes lit up. In Japan, he said, the crane was considered a mystical creature, and in folklore, it is said to live for 1,000 years. An ancient Japanese legend promises that anyone who folds 1,000 cranes, one for each year of a crane's life, will be granted a wish. After her father left the hospital for the evening, Sadako told Kyo she wanted to try folding some herself. With the legend in mind, she committed to folding a thousand cranes. She wanted, to she wanted her wish to come true. She wanted to be well, to return to school, and to live with her family again. Sadako pinned her hopes on the legend of the crane and poured her limited energy into folding. Each crane that she folded carried her dream. Her folding skills got better through practice. Each crane she folded was perfect and beautiful. During his next visit, her father expressed some concern. I wish you would not fold so many cranes, he told her. I worry it is taking too much of your strength. But Papa, I must, she replied. I have a new wish. It's a secret. You'll see when it comes true. Her father said no more. He knew he could not take away something that brought her such happiness and filled her with hope. 
Sadako, what's the secret you told Papa you had? Sadako's mother asked as she combed her hair that evening. Secret? Sadako's eyes twinkled. Papa is really curious, Sadako's mother said. He told me that you were thinking about something and then he asked you what it was. Oh, that secret, giggled Sadako. Fujiko finished combing Sadako's hair and turned her around. Sadako leaned in and whispered in her mother's ear, if you can keep a secret from Papa, I'll tell you. Her mother nodded and Sadako smiled. The crane's unfolding now. I'm praying that Papa's debt will be repaid soon. But if you tell him, he'll worry about it. Please keep the secret. When I decided to write this book, I went to Japan to meet Masahiro. Uh, I had no idea what to expect. I was a little concerned. I coming from the country that actually dropped the bomb and he being a victim of the bombing, I, I couldn't imagine that he would embrace me uh, and I wasn't sure what to expect. But in Masahiro, I found someone that did not hold any animosity and uh, found he had learned to embrace love and compassion over hate and revenge. He was really and is a remarkable person uh, and he doesn't speak English, but we translated uh, his thoughts and included them in the book, as well as, of course, all of his memories of growing up with Sadako. So I just wanted to read you a little bit uh, of what he wrote, and I think it might be a good guideline for, for the world we find ourselves in now. So here's a little from Masahiro. To move forward, we must unite with others. The wisest choice is to recognize and respect the differences in our ways of thinking, creating a new stage of hope that includes open, discuss and open discussions amongst all peoples. To overcome certain naturally existing differences between us, we should have a generous mind accepting each other. Cry when you need to if you have a lot of troubles, but grow up with a kind heart filled with compassion. When you are able to behave in that way, I'm sure you will notice that you have changed. This is the way to create a small bit of peace in your surroundings. When we can connect such small bits of peace together, we will surely have greater hope of peace in the future. This proves that you are living your life to the fullest. So thanks for listening today. Um, while you're spending more time at home, I hope, uh, I hope this book will provide some perspective that humanity's faced great challenges in the past and working together, uh, we've overcome them. Um, so we all feel uneasy, um, but we're in this together and uh, compassion, love, and looking out for one another will make us stronger and more uh, connected than we were uh, before this began. Um, so a few years ago, uh, I started something called the Peace Crane Project. And through that, I invite every student in the world to fold an origami crane, write a message of peace on its wings, and then through me, they trade it with another student somewhere in the world. Right now, I'm also encouraging people to fold cranes and just give them to whoever brings you comfort or whoever you want to provide comfort to. It could be someone you're sheltering with or someone that provides a service for you in, in this difficult time. So if you'd like to uh, join us for the exchange, or if you're just looking for, for materials, uh, folding guides or videos, um, you can check us out at peacecraneproject.org. And I also want to make sure to get in uh, that you should follow Asia Store on Facebook and Instagram and visit, visit asiastore.org um, to get know, to know more about all the authors and browse, uh, browse their book offerings, including the complete story of Sadako Sazaki and the Thousand Paper Cranes. Uh, be sure to tag a Asia Store and uh, their social media tag is in this together. Uh, so let's show we're all connected more than ever. So thanks for joining us. Uh, stay home when you can and wash your hands. Thanks.